Hi there, I'm back in the studio again, as you can see. I hope you're doing well. I know it's been a little bit of a break uh, since the last time I put a video up. And actually, that's really what I want to talk to you about today. Because it's been a little bit of a while, I've been really, really busy again. And, uh, you know, doing other things, doing some workshops, doing live workshops, and online workshops, that um, I've been a bit remiss with answering the comments on the YouTube channel here. So I thought what I'd do, rather than going through all the comments that are on there and typing in answers and things like that, I thought what I'd do is I just go through just a few of the questions that have been popping up on the comments in the YouTube channel and just answer them like a kind of Q&A. So I hope you enjoy watching that because it's still a little bit different and you know if you enjoy it, do let me know because it's something that I can then do more of in the future. Okay, let's have a look. I just got a few questions that I thought were quite relevant to a lot of people. So I'll just go through them and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so the first question that I actually get asked quite a lot is about finishing paintings with oil paint. Because as you probably know from watching my videos and seeing me paint, that a lot of my work is water-based, I'm using acrylics and watercolour and gouache and pencils and things like that. So there's a lot of dry materials and a lot of water-based materials as well. But when I get towards the end of the painting process, I do add some oil paint. So there's quite a few people have been asking me you know, why I do that, what the purpose it is, and at what point I decide to switch over from using the water-based materials to using the oil paint. So that's a really good question because if you look at a painting like the one that's behind me here, the majority of this painting was done in acrylics, really acrylic paint, um, and using water-based dry materials like uh, pastels and pencils and things like that. But there's a point where I've get, got to where I've decided right now I'm ready to start using some oil paint. And the reason I do that is because I think the oil paint has a particular natural beauty that the acrylics and water-based paints just don't have. And this is, you know, it's one of those things that's completely personal. But for me, I just like the look of oil paint. And in the past, for a long time, all I did was use oil paint. I didn't use any kind of other kind of paint at all. But what happened to me was I spent a lot of time working outside. I was spent a lot of time doing paintings directly outside and using acrylics and watercolor and gouache, those kind of mixed media paintings, made a lot of sense when working outside because it's just easier to work with those sorts of paints. You're not carrying terps and stuff like that around. You have to worry about uh, cleaning your brushes while you're out and things like that. So what I was doing was I was painting outside with all these acrylics and water-based materials and coming back to the studio and working in oil paint. And I was thinking, you know, this isn't really doing it for me. Why, why aren't my paintings having the same kind of quality? I'm, I'm having to spend a lot more time, you know, waiting between layers for them to dry. And it just sort of, you know, it's like a pretty obvious thing. I said, well, I'm using a different paint, you know, because I'm using different paint, I'm getting different results. It's really obvious. So I thought, well, why don't I try working in water-based paint in the studio using acrylics and you know I can do those same sorts of um, layering, quick layering, quick drying, those sorts of processes that I was really enjoying working outside sort of in situ plein air kind of painting. And so I started doing that but I get towards the end of the painting process and I was just missing something. I was just feeling that I was missing that quality that the oil paint has, that beautiful natural quality, the, the depth of the color, the way the actual oil and mixes with the terps and actually behaves and just moves about on the surface in a very different way to how acrylics do. So what I thought I'd do is work the paintings in acrylics and all these fast drying materials until it gets to a point where I feel I'm ready to use the oil paint. And that is a very <laughs> undefined, ill-defined line between the acrylics and the oil. It just, let's go back to this painting here. I'm looking at this one and I'm thinking, there was a point where I felt that the composition was more or less resolved, that everything was where I wanted it to be. So when I start using the oil paint, it very much is a glazing, finishing, refining, 
introducing some subtlety that's harder to do with uh, acrylics and water-based paint. So I'm not moving things around, not changing the comp composition too much, just adding to the painting and finishing it off really, building up those final subtle uh, highlights, interesting layers, more, uh, yeah, this kind of more subtle transition between the different tones and different colors that it's much easier to do with the kind of semi-transparent oil paint and oil painting medium. So that's why I do it. It's, uh, you know, that was the history <laughs> behind the whole thing. And the reason I do it is just, I simply prefer the look of oil paint, but I really like the speed and the flexibility of the water-based paints to be able to build up those layers, fast drying layers really quickly. Okay, let's move on to another question. This was quite a good one, actually. Somebody on the uh, channel had commented that it was had this kind of revelation a little bit that they could use water with charcoal. So um, obviously it was one of my videos where I was sketching outside, using some charcoal, throwing some water onto the paper and actually moving the charcoal around you know, with the water. And this is something that's really nice. It's a great way of getting lots of really interesting variety of tones and different marks, but with incredibly simple materials. You just got a stick of charcoal and an old floppy brush and a bit of water, some paper, and you can do so much with that because it's, you've got the flexibility to go from the darkest dark you can possibly get to the bright white of the paper and all the tones and different marks you can make in between. So it's incredibly simple in terms of the materials, but the flexibility of what you can do with the tones and mark making is incredibly broad. So that's why I do that, but it is quite specific and you have to be a bit careful because um, every now and again, someone will say to me, oh, you know, I tried that. I tried working with the charcoal and water and it just, it just didn't work. It was just turned into a kind of gray mush and uh, didn't behave in the way that it looks like your charcoal is behaving. Is it somehow some kind of special charcoal? And in a way it is, because what it is is compressed charcoal. It's not the normal willow charcoal that you might get for doing life drawing or any other kind of drawing. Because the willow charcoal is literally a, a burnt stick. It's traditional charcoal. Whereas the charcoal that I'm using is compressed charcoal. So it's more like a black pastel. So I've got some here and the one I use is this, this one, it's a Jacquard one. Now I get these off Amazon, so it's not special in any way and they're pretty cheap as well. It's not like this is the expensive posh stuff. This is, um, I mean, I don't know how much they are. They're like five or six pounds here in the UK off Amazon for 12 sticks. So it's not the really, it's not some sort of fancy um, compressed charcoal that you might get if you go to an art shop and buy, you know, buy a stick for a pound or something like that, you know, it's not like that. And the fact that it's, it's just, it's so soft, you know, it's just really soft. It just comes off on your fingers and you get <laughs> really mucky, particularly if you're using it with water. But this is what you need. You need the compressed charcoal. I think it's partly because they are cheap ones, then they fall apart very readily. I think if you get, you can get different hardness of compressed charcoal and these ones are really soft. And as like I said, they fall apart very easily. So that's why they work so well with the water because they're kind of granular. As they start to fall apart onto the page, you get this kind of graininess, which can be a really nice effect as well. So if you've tried it, if you've seen me working with it and you're not getting the kind of results that you see me getting when I'm working like that, it's probably because either you're using a willow charcoal, which is just not gonna work at all, or your charcoal is possibly just too good. <laughs> your compressed charcoal may be too good. Um, it's slightly too hard, possibly. So these, these are really soft and that's what you need. So kind of the cheaper, the better, really. <laughs> so like I said, those are the ones, I get them off Amazon and they're, what are they? What's the make? Jacquard. These are Jack R ones. Um, and yeah, just, just have a look and see if you can get, it's like 12 sticks and they're, they're pretty cheap. So if you can get hold of those, those are the ones to go for. Okay, this next question is actually something that's come up 
uh, a couple of times recently on my membership group and also in a Q&A that I was doing on one of my online workshops. And that's when we were talking about how to go about mounting your work on paper if you don't want to put it behind glass. And I don't know why, but it's come up a couple of times because it's not something that I've really thought about that much over the years. I have given it a go, but I, I do understand what people are saying. It's like you get to a point with your work, uh, you, I'm sure you've seen me on this channel doing uh, work in my sketchbook where I've been out painting and then I've torn them up, done some collage and made a interesting painting in my, well I hope it's interesting, an interesting painting in my sketchbook. And then sometimes I will take those out of my sketchbook, remount them and frame them. And I usually do that behind glass, but I always do it behind glass because it's on paper and I tend to think that they look better that way. But occasionally, um, and like I said recently, people have been saying to me, you know, what, what do you do if you don't want to frame those behind glass? Is there a way of maybe mounting them on board or something like that? And uh, my answer to that really is, yeah, of course you can. Uh, you could get some um, thin board or card um, and then take the paintings out of the sketchbook, mount them onto the card, weight them under some heavy boards so they go completely flat. And then obviously you could varnish them so you could treat them as if it were a a painting that's on board or a thin canvas or canvas board or something like that and then you could frame them you've got a rigid surface and you could frame it as if it were on a piece of board or a canvas board and that's absolutely fine there's a couple of things that i don't particularly like about that though and that is one that when you take some work on paper and you don't have the glass you need to protect it somehow and really that means varnishing so you are going to have to varnish the piece of work and um, if it's on paper it can be very absorbent obviously there's going to be areas which have got some paint on they'll be less absorbent you may have areas which have uh, they're just clean paper still and they're going to be very absorbent so they're going to take the varnish in different ways you're going to have some areas of the painting that are going to take a lot of the varnish into the material we're going to have other areas of the painting where it's not going to take so much in. So you're going to have a very variable sheen on your surface. You're going to have parts which are quite glossy and parts which are quite matte. And you may have to build up several layers of varnish in order to get an even sheen over the surface because I think it would look a bit odd. I mean, again, it's a personal preference in a way, but to me, I like to have an even sheen, not glossy, a kind of semi-gloss on my paintings if I'm, if I'm, um, going to varnish them like this one again it's not super high glossy it's kind of satin and so you would have to build up all these layers of varnish in order to get an even sheen over the surface and I have tried it in the past thinking yeah, it'd be quite nice to not have that glass not have the glass in front between have that barrier between the painting and the person who's looking at it but I've just never found it very satisfactory I just think it just looks a bit ugly frankly and again, this is all very subjective, but if you've found a way to varnish your paper, your work on paper that looks really good, uh, please do let me know because I'd love to have a go at it and give it a try. Um, personally, I haven't found a way of doing that. So I tend to just think of work on paper goes behind glass. If it's on board or canvas, then it doesn't really need it. So let's move on to this last question that I've got here, which is simply, somebody asked me what pencils I use when I'm painting, drawing and painting, adding them into the work that I do either outside or in the studio. And you may have seen me using these um, big, where are they? Here we go. These big chunky crayons, basically. And these are, um, these are kids crayons. They're, they're not fancy at all. They're like a water-based, um, chunky, uh, they're, they behave a little bit like um, an oil pastel, but they're water-based. So they're called uh, Stabilo Woodies. And you can get these, you know, all over the place, eBay, Amazon, art shops, 
Again, you can get them in stationers. I think the very first place I bought them was actually in a stationery shop. I think I was away and I wanted to do some drawing. I didn't have anything with me. So I went into a stationery shop and I bought a little sketchbook and I bought a few of these Stabilo woodies and just did some sketching. They're quite good fun. They're big chunky kind of things and you can um, use them a bit like uh, watercolor as well. You can uh, mix a bit of water with them and spread them around. So they're quite good fun, but they're not particularly sophisticated, but <laughs> they're, they're good fun to use. So I do use those quite a bit, but I've kind of moved away from them a little bit um, because I tend to use more of things like this, which are just soft pastels, just, you know, ordinary soft pastels. They're quite nice to use when I'm drawing and painting, particularly because um, partly the material comes off, again, a bit like the charcoal, is the material comes off onto the paper and mixes with water quite nicely. So you, you can be, you're almost like using them like a paint, it's like a direct application of paint. So that can be quite good fun. And also recently I've been using um, oil pastels. So just like kind of ordinary oil pastels. And all these things are just kind of mix them together when I'm painting, just using them when I feel it's the right tool for the job. So the good thing about using oil pastels, particularly when you're working with um, water-based paint is you can use them to uh, get a mark down on the surface that isn't gonna lift up. So unlike the soft pastels, which will lift when you get them wet, mixed with the water, the, uh, the oil pastels won't do that because obviously they resist the water. So it's like a permanent, you put that down, it's not going anywhere. So that's really good. It's a useful thing to be able to do. And I've also got some of these um, big chunky ones as well. These are Sennelier oil pastels and they're really good fun. Um, they're just you know, bigger versions of oil pastels. You can get these in the normal size as well. I just happen to have these big ones and you can make nice big marks with them when you're drawing and painting. So they're a lot of fun. It's not an oil stick. Uh, I don't really use oil sticks for no particular reason. I haven't got anything against them. I just don't have any, um, but I suppose it's similar to an oil stick in a way, but it's uh, actually a, an oil pastel. So they're a lot of fun. And I also have some of these, which are just ordinary uh, watercolor pencils. And, and I find these work rather nicely as well. Obviously it's a finer mark. So all these things, if you look at them, what I've got, I've got a combination of different types of marks. I've got, I can make my big chunky marks with these Sennelier oil pastels. I can make the more uh, refined marks with the smaller oil pastels. And again, it's something that won't lift with the water. And then I can make finer marks again with the pencils. And then I said, they're just watercolor pencils. And the funny thing about the watercolor pencils is that I find they actually work quite well when I'm working on board with oil paint as well. I think the, um, whatever they're made of actually reacts quite nicely with a bit of uh, white spirit or terps and they actually flow rather nicely. So if you've never tried um, drawing on your paintings that's got oil on them, then you know it's worth a go because it's quite a nice mark. It's uh, again, it's like the oil paint. It behaves in a slightly different way, slightly more natural kind of way, less hard. So it's getting a nice soft line, but a fine line. So that was that really. So that was just a few of the questions that had cropped up on my YouTube channel over the last couple of months. As I said, I've just been really busy doing workshops and <laughs> live workshops and online workshops and just doing other things. And I've just not had a chance to do anything, not had a chance to do any YouTube either, but you know, um, these things come and go and I'm going to continue to attempt to put as many of these videos up as possible. If you enjoyed that Q and A, do let me know because uh, you know, it's something I can do again in the future. And if you've got any questions that you want me to answer, just pop them onto the comments to the to this video and I'll have a look. And maybe in the next one, we can go through a few more. OK, as you know, I've got workshops coming up. You can sign up for my Paint It Big online workshop, which is coming up at the end of June. It's a two week online workshop, which is a lot of fun. We did it last year. And it's all about working on a bigger scale. So if you want to try to move on from working in your sketchbook and want to think about how do I get these larger pieces of work and it's not just about scaling up, it's 
a lot more to it than that. It's a lot of fun and like I said, it's a two week online workshop. So the details for that are on my website. Here's the link. And it's also a link in the description of the video. Okay, if you enjoyed watching that one, please don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. And I'll see you soon.